Good afternoon, beauty professionals. Today, I wanna to talk to you about electricity. But before we get started, I wanna thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you for your support, God bless you. And let's get started. So I guess the first thing that I'd want to talk about is, why do you think us as cosmetologists, we need to know about electricity? Where in class, I know it may be a boring topic. Actually, it's pretty fascinating to me, but as a student, it may be a little boring to talk about, but it's important to know because we deal with electricity in a big portion of our career. We're dealing with blow dryers, with curling irons, flat irons, Marcel ovens that we have to plug in. We're doing facials with electrical equipment. We're using electric files for the nails. So it's important to know the safety of using electricity, what it is, um, understanding it, and being safe is the key with yourself and with your clients. So for example, if you're blow drying someone's hair, did you know that it's not safe to place your blow dryer down while it's still running? Did you know that it could short out and that it could actually catch a fire? And that's why when you're not using your blow dryer, you don't just sit it on your station while it's on, you turn it off. Um, also, when you leave your Marcel ovens plugged in, unattended, your flat irons unattended, let's say you go out for a break and you leave your curling irons and flat irons on, did you know that if there's any kind of tear in the cord or it can overload and it can set a fire? So while you're out of the salon, your salon could be catching on fire because you left your irons on. So these are some of the reasons why you need to know electricity. Also, when you're doing skincare, if you have the current turned up too high, you could actually burn someone's skin. And I mean like sizzle the skin. So these are reasons why you need to know electricity. Also, this is one of the chapters that would be a part of your state board written test. So all of the chapters, that you go through in your theory class, if they're teaching it correct, should be what's on your state board written because you know in California now, the test is actually all written. Okay, so what is electricity? Electricity is a form of energy and it can create magnetic effects, it can create chemical or thermal effects, right? So some of the examples could be in skincare, when you're using high frequency or galvanic or other electrical tools like microcurrent and you're creating a chemical effect, excuse me, in that you're pushing products down further into the skin. Um, also chemical effect where it becomes a bactericide on the skin where you're killing bacteria that's causing acne or pimples. So those are examples, thermal effects, could be of course from the blow dryer, flat iron, curling iron, wand, whatever it is you're using that would create thermal effects because the heat is generating from the electricity. Now what I find that's fascinating about electricity is it is actually the negatively charged particles around the atom called electrons. So technically it's a form of negative energy, but it's going from atom to atom and being pushed along a conductor. The flow of electricity along a conductor is what we call electric current. Now, any material can be considered a conductor or a non-conductor, and non-conductors are also known as insulators. So there are some examples of conductors that I'm going to give to you, but just think of it as a material that allows the current to flow more easily. And an insulator or non-conductor doesn't make it so easy for it to flow through. Although non-conductors will cover the conductor. So for example, the copper wiring in the plug to your curling iron. Well, if we touch that directly because we're insulators ourselves, we would get electrocuted, right? But the non-conductor um, or insulator that's covering that wiring, which is your plug, that allows for that flow of electricity to go through without us getting electrocuted. So we can grab the plug and we can unplug it carefully and we won't get electrocuted. However, if there's tears in those cords, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but um, 
back in the day, if we had a vacuum and let's say the cord, the wire was starting to pop out, we would put duct tape over it. But that's actually dangerous because the wiring, which is a conductor, is allowing for the electricity to easily flow through it and it could melt through that tape and we could have been electrocuted. So those are examples of conductors and non-conductors. More examples of what conductors are, water, metals, copper. Interestingly enough, distilled water is not considered a conductor. We are conductors. Um, so if you're out in the middle of an electrical storm, uh, and if you're standing in water, that's gonna make it even worse. But if you get struck by lightning, you are a conductor. That electricity easily passes through you. So examples of insulators or non-conductors would be wood, silk, rubber, glass, and even cement is considered a good non-conductor. And that just means that it doesn't allow electricity to pass through it easily. And that's all that I have for you in this video, part one of electricity. Stay tuned for next week when I talk more about electrical circuits and direct current, alternating current. So we're just gonna go through the chapter of electricity. In the meantime, you guys be safe with your tools, make sure you're handling them safely. And if there's any tears in your cord, please make sure to buy yourself a new flat iron, a new curling iron. Don't duct tape it and continue to use it as that is not safe for you. Thank you again for watching.